Um, it feels a bit weird because I feel like I'm talking to myself. So any kind of like thumbs up, comments, anything you like during the, uh, the next half an hour would be much appreciated because it is a bit weird. And if you could put your cameras on, I'd be really grateful. Unless you're like on the loo or in the bath. Um, because then I can actually see people that I'm talking to and it does help. Um, as those of you who've ever done a Zoom call will know. So we've got a lot of brand, brand new people on the call as well. So what I want to do initially is just introduce myself for those of you who are new on the call uh, or new to the business um, or relatively new or anything like that. Um, and hopefully uh, we do this call every Tuesday night at nine o'clock. Thanks for turning your videos on, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, depending on what you're doing, but those of you who are just looking normal, that's fine. Um, so, uh, yeah, so my name's Emma Sneddon. I am a presidential marketing director in the Juice Plus company. Um, amongst other things, that's just what I do for a living, but I'm also a mum of two kids and a stepdaughter. My children are three and, no, they're not how old are <laughs> He was three when I started the business thing. He's, so <laughs> he's six, Molly's eight, and my stepdaughter is um, 18. Um, I joined the business three years ago as a very busy working mum. Um, wasn't looking for anything different, particularly not out there looking for a change in my life, but I stumbled across the Juice Plus product through my personal trainer at the time, a guy called John Hollowatty, who, uh, if you're in my team, which you should be if you're on this call, he is my upline, so therefore he's upline to all of you guys as well. So you're in very good hands, which is the first thing that you need to know. Um, so he was my personal trainer. He introduced me to Juice Plus as a product, predominantly, like a lot of people, I thought, I don't need that. I eat really healthily. I don't need extra fruit and bread. Don't get it. Don't understand it. So therefore, it must be nonsense. Uh, couldn't have been more wrong. Um, I decided to give it a go about three or four months later just to lose a little bit of weight because I thought it was a weight loss product like a lot of people do. Can be used as a weight loss product, but it's, that's not what it was designed for. It's just alongside a healthy eating plan. It can be used to, for weight maintenance or weight loss or weight gain, in fact, whichever you want to do. For me, I wanted to lose a little bit of Christmas weight. Loved the product. Fell in love with it like that. Just, just everything about it. I was, uh, it changed my health. I changed my energy levels. It gave me my evenings back. I used to crawl into bed at eight o'clock at night, absolutely knackered. Um, after like a 14, 16 hour working day. Um, for those of you who are working parents, and I mean, working in a traditional job sense, not everybody's a parent. Everybody who is a parent is working in one way or another. But anyone who's got both a job and a parenting position will know what I mean by like just feeling like you're on Groundhog Day all the time. It's just get up, get dressed, get the kids to their respective places of education or childcare, you go to work, you come home, you pick them up, you put some food into them, you bath them, you put them to bed and you kind of crawl into bed yourself straight afterwards and then try and squash in the gym and shopping and cleaning the house and all the other stuff that we've all got to do. So I was that person, not unhappy, but just on a kind of a treadmill of life. And I really, um, loved the product and felt like I, I wasn't so tired and I wanted other mums to feel like I did and one of the things I'm going to talk about today is kind of understanding your what your story is because uh, you need to be able to share your product story and your business story because that's what people buy into they buy into you uh, and what you're telling them and your experience and also it's very difficult for people to argue with that because that's your story so um, I loved the product, loved everything about it. Everybody noticed the difference in me, in my energy levels, in my excitement, in the, the fact that I would literally drop my son at nursery at eight in the morning, I'd pick him up at six. I was always first child in, last child we picked up, my kids were always. I never knew any of the other mums because I was always the one who dropped them off first and picked them up last. And I would have had a massive busy day, but I was still happy and, you know, and, and feeling good. And they noticed and my friends noticed and my family noticed and my husband noticed. So I naturally shared the product. I take this product, I feel amazing. What is it? It's called Juice Plus. Where do I get it? My friend can get it for you. That's literally how I start the business. And I think it's how most people should start or do start as well, is take the product, love the product and share it with other people. And that was all I did um, initially. And John came back to me. He had already told me about the business opportunity about six months before that. Um, I was literally, this is how the conversation went. He said, uh, this is October 2012. He said, Emma, um, I've got a business opportunity for you. And I said, I'm not interested. That was it. Didn't ask what it was. Didn't ask anything about it. I was just like, I don't have time. Whatever it is, I'm not interested. And he just said, OK, well, it's a business designed for busy people. And we left it at that for like six months. And then he came back to me uh, after I started taking the product and said, do you remember that business opportunity that I told you about? And I said, yeah. And he went, this is it. And you're already doing it. You're just not getting paid for it now. I was like, what do you mean? And he said, you're already recommending the product to people naturally. 
um, and there's a business opportunity attached to it and I still said no excuse me initially because I had this preconceived idea that I didn't have time and you'll come across that more like all the time you get lots of objections from people and that's a very common one I don't have time and it's not more often than not it's just a preconceived idea about how much time it's actually going to take or how much how little time they've got but do you know what I used to work to Coronation Street EastEnders and Emmerdale that's an hour and a half a night and I thought I didn't have time to run a business. It's nonsense. It's just a preconceived idea about what you think you're busy. Um, anyway, so I, uh, I, when I found out it was only 50 quid to join, I was like, oh, do you know what? Go on then. I've got nothing to lose. And five customers have made my money back and everything else is profit. And it just made sense to me that if I could earn £200 a month, I'd have £1,000 at Christmas. And that was February 2013. Um, fast forward seven months. Um, what I did do, and I'm going to cover some of this in the kind of how to get your business moving or started wherever you are in the business, it doesn't matter where you are, whether you just started or you've, you know, you've been doing it for months, there'll be stuff in there that can help you. But I literally jumped in with both feet and that's one of the things I, I would recommend that you do. If you, re if you really want this to take off for you, you have got to jump in with both feet. You've got to go to all the events. You've got to get on all the Zoom calls. You guys are on the Zoom calls, but there's 141 people on here and there's about six and a half thousand people in my team. So I don't know where the other 6,300 are but you're the ones who are on the call. The other people are doing other things. They might be on other calls, whatever. That's absolutely fine. But you know, you've got to take action and take responsibility for your own business. You guys are doing that because you're on the call, but you've got to do that consistently. And when things will come along, you'll get distracted. You've got to decide. And I put it on Facebook before, you've got to decide, is this a priority for me or not? And if it's not, that's fine. But if you want it to work for you, it has to be a priority. And I just made it a priority for me. Um, and I remember saying to my husband, look, I've, I'm going to do this, um, but I'm, you know, he was very skeptical, didn't get it, didn't understand it, thought I was crazy. And I was like, I'm going to do it anyway, but I need you, like, if, if, I just need you to babysit sometimes and, you know, help me. You don't have to do anything, you don't have to get it or understand it, just don't be in my way. Uh, and he agreed to that, and that's kind of how we got started. But I went to every event, I put on events, I was very teachable, I read every book, I watched every, everything that I needed to do, I did. And that's kind of what you need to do if you're serious about it, and depends what level you want to play at. So seven months after I started, I left my full-time job. So bear in mind, I started thinking I was going to earn £200 a month. I earned £84.14 in my first month. And honestly, I was quite happy with that. I was like, I just fucked around on Facebook a little bit, chatted to some people, and, I, and I'd made my money back. And I've never, I've never seen a business opportunity before anywhere where you can make your money back in your first month. And everything you do after that is profit. It's like... It's a crazy business model, but once you get your head around that, there is no risk attached to it. And so when people were saying to me, oh, it's this and it's that and it's risky, it's like, it's, it's not. Like, there isn't, you tell me where the risk is and I'll, and I'll look at it. Like, I'm a sensible, grown mother of three. I get it. If there's a risk, I want to know, but there isn't one. And it just made sense to me. So everything I did paid off. Everything I got told to do, whether I thought it was crazy or not. Vision boards, for example, I just was like, what? Like, I ain't got time to cut out pictures of stuff and stick them on a chart. I don't get it. But I did it anyway and it worked. But I did it my way. Like I just did a quick, you know, pen and paper job. So whatever works for you is fine. And I'm not saying that you have to work 24 hours a day. You don't. This is a part-time business opportunity that fits around what you already do. But you've got to decide how interested you are. Are you interested or committed? If you're committed, what level are you committed at? And then when you've made that decision, just stick to it. Whatever it is, make a decision. I'm going to stick to it for three months or six months or a year or whatever it is. I was like a year. I'm going to do it full out for a year and I'm going to see where I end up. And at the end of that year, I'd left my full-time job. I'd resigned my husband from his full-time job. And I would take my kids to school myself every day, which I never did. I'd pick them up from school myself with my husband every single day, which I never did. We live in a better house. We live, we've got, we drive better cars. We go on holiday that we never used to do. Um, you know, every school holiday we go away with the kids, which we never used to do. Loads and loads of stuff, all because I decided to make a commitment to the business opportunity, which you can too. <clears throat> so that's kind of my story. Three years on, um, I've just kind of gone through my three-year anniversary. I've got a great team all over the world. I'm now, I think I've got nine, pretty much get paid from 19 different countries. I only really ever recruited in England and Ireland front line. So that's other people building outside of my, uh, my front line. So that's like kind of how it works. Um, so really, the reason for telling most of you that, hopefully a reminder for some of you who already kind of know my story, but also um, for those of you who are new, is just to help you see what's possible. It's really important. Go and find the stories. There's so many stories out there. Just Plus Testimonials page on Facebook was brilliant for um, product stories. Every, everything 
that you need, whether it's energy, whether it's a, a medical condition, like we don't make any medical claims, but there's so many people who, I don't know anything that doesn't get, so have some benefit from better nutrition. Any condition, any physical condition has a, you know, the benefit of good nutrition is, everybody knows what that is. And the same with the business opportunity, you've only got to go on Facebook and search friends of friends and everybody's business stories are on there. So get inspired by other people and be your own inspiration. So um, I want to go through like 10 things. I have got hundreds of things that I could teach you, um, but I've only got half an hour. So I've tried to keep it to 10. But also what I would suggest, if you haven't already booked your tickets for the Six Figure Summit in Liverpool, which is on the 16th, this is going to be like, well, in John Holloway's words, unmissable. And everything John has ever taught me or told me is exactly what I've always done. Everything I've, like, I, I, I learned from him and then I added in stuff that I, you know, I already knew and added in stuff from other people. But he's, he said it's unmissable. And if he said it's unmissable, then I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not missing it. <laughs> so I wouldn't, if you're serious about the business, you know, walk there if you have to, sleep in the car, don't come to the after party if you don't need to, just, you know, if you need to get home, that's fine. But the, everyone who's speaking at that are, you know, six figure or above earners in this company. I've earned that money with this company and they're going to share, myself included, how we did it, how you can do it. Very, you know, stuff you can actually take away, but a really fun day as well. I mean, I've seen some of the agenda, I've seen the speakers, it's literally out of this world. So keep an eye on Facebook, the speakers are, but don't miss the opportunity. We've got about 200 tickets left, I think. Um, so they'll be sold in the next couple of days, I think, because they're going live tomorrow. Okay, so number one, uh, and these aren't in any particular order. I literally just did like a brainstorm. Uh, before I put the kids to bed earlier on and picked out some stuff. Uh, yeah, 16th of April. Thanks, guys. Um, so number one is you can't change people. They can only change themselves. Now, I'll repeat that. You can't change people. They can only change themselves. Now, this is something that I think you learn as you go through. But this is about you as well. Like, I can't change you, but you can change you. And, the, and you've got to sort of, this is, it's a twofold thing. It's about... Are you ready to make some changes that will make you better at what you do? But also to accept that not everybody's ready to change or needs to change or wants to change. And that's fine too. You've got to respect where people are. So when you're sharing this business opportunity, you're sharing this product with people, just remember that you can't change that person. You're one of the best pieces of advice I got from somebody with a uh, 100 Club uh, NMD in America called um, Elizabeth Small. I've been in the business 22 years, I think, similar sort of time to Jeff Roberti, who's the, you know, the highest earner in the company. And she said to me, this is not um, a convincing business. And I see it all the time. People saying, how do I convince this person? How do I get that person? This isn't a convincing business. It's an information sharing business. And I, I'll, I'll always remember that because sometimes you find yourself like, oh, like you want it so much for that person, whether it's the product and you know it would benefit them. Mike and I had a conversation today about one of our family members who we know would benefit massively from this product, but absolutely stone cold refuses to even try it or even talk about it. And it's like, oh, so frustrating. But you, we, all we can do is share that information consistently, not over and over again, not banging your head on a wall, but just say, look, this is the information, but you take in the product and you share in the product and you talking about the benefits that you feel and you live in your life in a, in a positive way will rub off eventually on other people. So just bear that in mind, you can't change other people, they can only change themselves. Um, secondly, you don't get a full-time income for a part-time effort. Now, some of this stuff is going to be a little bit, maybe a little bit close to the bone, maybe a little bit uncomfortable for people, but I think sometimes home truths are really important. So uh, we're coming up to the 10th of the month, where I know that you'll be sitting all over Facebook, or oh, such and such is earning loads of money and I've been paid this and I've got a bonus there and it can be two things it can be really motivating or really demotivating depending on what's going on in your life in your business or whatever you can be like why is that person doing so well and I'm not I'm trying really hard and they seem to be doing really well and do you know what within this thing is something really important don't compare yourself to other people unless it's in a positive way because what's the point unless you're learning something from that person or you can implement something that they're doing all you're doing is beating yourself up. And the way that I keep myself in check from that is I think, how would I, how would I deal with my child? If my child came home and were like, this person's prettier than me, this person's better at sports than me, this person's cleverer than me, what would I say to them? Because that's what you should say to yourself. You don't go, yeah, they are prettier than you, but you know, they, they, I don't know, they, they exercise more or they eat better or whatever it is. It's, 
this you, you have to treat yourself the way you would treat your child or another child if you're not a parent just you know, don't don't beat yourself up about things that you can't change but learn where you can so you know we all look at other people and think oh like they're going faster than me or but you, what you don't see on Facebook is all the people who are going at the same speed as you or slower than you or who've given up completely, just gone, oh, I can't, can't do it, won't do it, whatever. Mm-hmm. So you are on your own journey. You are the only person, it goes back to the first one, you can't change other people, but you can change you. Um, but you won't get paid a full-time income straight away. And you won't get paid a full-time income and more, which is what you know a lot of people are getting now. If you don't put the effort in, if you only put like a half arsed baked effort in if you don't try consistently and one of the things john used to say to me was what would you pay you for what you did this month or this week or today and i ask myself that every night still now i go to bed and i think what would i pay myself for what i've done today like what what have i actually done that's been income producing what have i actually done that's built my business what have i actually done that's helped to build my front line helped to get me wider helped to get me deeper or am i just managing my team sometimes um, or am I just scrolling through Facebook? If your thumb's doing this instead of this, you need to be actually actively out there doing stuff so you don't get paid a full-time income for a part-time effort. So you decide how much would you pay yourself. Number three, I want you to ask yourself three questions. Now, these, this doesn't matter whether you're just starting out, brand new first day, or you're six months in, 12 months in, right? If you're struggling or you have a day when you're struggling, just ask yourself these things. Do you believe in the company? And the answer should be yes. Do you believe in the product? Now, we, we should all be taking the product. We should definitely all be taking the capsules. This, like some of this stuff's a no-brainer. We should all be taking the product. And do you believe in you? You have to have all three of those things. Company belief, product belief, and belief in yourself. And quite often, the belief in yourself is the one where we struggle a little bit. But you do need to have all three. So if there's one of those that's a little bit, you know, it's a bit like a triathlon. You know, you can't do a triathlon and just go, I'm not going to bother with the cycling because I don't like it or I struggle with it a little bit. You've got to do it. Otherwise, you don't complete the triathlon. So if you've got one of those three things, whether it's you don't understand the company enough, you've not tried the products enough, so therefore your story's not strong enough, or you've got some self-belief issues, which I know is really common. We all have them. You've got to go to work on the thing that's holding you back, whichever one of those three that it might be. But keep those, keep those, they're on the Elite Academy page. You can have a look at them, but just kind of keep those in the mind. If you've got massive, massive, like stone-clad belief in the product, massive, massive stone-clad belief in the company, you you can't go wrong. And you should have those two things because the company's 40 odd years old, it's got no debt, it's private, you know, it's, it's all the things that you would need ever to make yourself feel totally secure. I have no doubt this company's here for the long haul and the best of the times are ahead of us. And I only have to look at the people that are in this company to know that. Look at the corporate team we've got. Look at the people who've been in the business for 25, 30 years who are absolute massive advocates of everything that we do. And they know that the best times are ahead of us. Product is a no-brainer. It's got more research than any other product on the planet in terms of a nutritional supplement. There's nothing, any, anything on the, anywhere that comes even close to having the research that we've got and it's bulletproof. So if the issue is you and your own belief in yourself, go back to what I just said before. How would you talk to a child? Would you tell your child you were crap? Would you tell your child they couldn't do it? Would you tell, tell a child that they're not, never going to make it, they're never going to be successful, it's too hard? You know, Stop beating yourself up and focus on what you can do instead of on what you can't. Focus on the things that you can impact instead of on the things that you can't. Focus on the things that are going to move you forward, not hold you back. And if that includes people around you, and I think I've got that somewhere else in here, if the people around you are holding back, you may need to make a decision to move away slightly from some of those people. You know, if you share your hopes and dreams with somebody and they we all over them, I don't know if we've got kids on here, so I'm going to mind my language. If you share your hopes and dreams with someone, if you've got massive vision for yourself and your family and someone goes, oh, that's never going to happen, or you're living in cloud cuckoo land, you might need to just not share your hopes and dreams with that person because they aren't on the same journey that you're on. Your hopes and dreams need to be huge. They need to be something that 95% of the population would never have, would never think is possible, but we know they're possible. Because you have to believe it, because everyone around you is living that too. But just be cautious of the people that you surround yourself with, the people that you've got on your Facebook. I literally delete or hide or whatever or whatever you want people from Facebook who are negative, who are fun sponges, who are mood hoovers, who neg all over everybody, who mourn constantly. I literally offer them the business opportunity, offer them the product, and if they're not interested, then I just hide them off my Facebook because they don't want to change themselves, but they will hold you back and they'll neg you out. So just, you know, be careful of the people that you surround yourself with. 
Okay, number four, stop getting distracted. This was another one of the best pieces of advice I ever got from a guy called Shay Jr., who is a multi, multi, multi millionaire in the business. Um, he uh, is Alex Webb's upline. This won't mean anything to those of you who are new, but upline, upline from you is a guy called Alex Webb. Upline from him is a guy called Shay Jr., who is actually originally from Manchester. As a little anecdote, we, we went to LA um, a couple of weeks ago as part of the American conference, and we got to go out for dinner with him, um, Mike and I, and John and Vicky and, and Simon Bowler. And uh, he was telling us a bit, a little bit about his life. Just it's so normal to him, but yet not to us. And he was saying, he said, I can only stay for a drink because we're packing up the house. And I was like, all oh, right, you're, you know, you're going on holiday, you're moving. It's like, no, no, like we live, we live in between LA and Ibiza. All right, okay, that nice. And he said, yeah. So we've been in LA for like nine months, or eleven months, and now we're packing up the house and we're going to go back to Ibiza for probably six to twelve months, and then maybe we'll come back here and we might go back to the UK for a little bit. And I said to him, like, haven't you, like, what about your children? So his children are, I think, eight, four, and 19 months. He's like, so what happens with them? He said, well, they go to school in LA when they're here, and they go to school in Ibiza when they're there, and they love it. And he said, so, you know, they're, they're sad to leave their, their friends here, but they're happy to go to their new their friends. I was just like, his life is just so cool, and that, it doesn't even have to work. It's just like, this is just chilled. He's so relaxed. Like, he's the most relaxed man you've ever seen because he's got no stress in his life. But what an amazing life those children are going to have. And that's all through this company. So two years ago, maybe, or three years ago, he said to me, I was about, I think I was about an SSC in the company, maybe. And he said, Emma, don't get distracted. And I was like, well, I don't know, what, I don't, I didn't really know what he meant. He said, but things will come along that will try and distract you. He said, normal life will try and distract you every day. Your kids, your job, your husband, your home, your bills, all of that stuff will try and distract you from your goals. He said, but then as your business gets bigger, and you get more established, other things will start to try and distract you. So other companies will come along and, you know, try and get you to do that. It fits perfectly alongside you, plus which you get all the time. So that will happen. Don't get distracted. He said, you know, other, the, the things will change in the company. Don't get distracted. You have to be so completely focused on what your goals are and why you're doing it. And the way I've always looked at this, and if, if you haven't watched my Arizona video, just put Emma Snedden Arizona into YouTube. I did a presentation in America a couple of years ago. I talk about this and it's I talk I, I looked at it always and I still do like running the gauntlet do you remember um gladiators years ago used to be Saturday night telly get put your pajamas on and watch gladiators before bed right and the last bit of it was running the gauntlet and they had to run down this thing and get to the end and they had everything thrown at them and they had like pugil sticks and balls and people trying to pull them over and all of that sort of stuff that's what this is that's the distractions that's the things that you know you're they get in the way between you and your goals and you and where you want to be. So always look at it like you're going from there to there. Don't look backwards. You're not going that way. Don't look sideways because you'll literally get, you'll, it's like driving a car. If you look sideways or backwards, what's going to happen? You're going to crash. You need to be so focused on where you're going that that's all that you see. A bit like a horse in a race. You watch the Grand National on Saturday. Those horses aren't looking around them to see where the other horses are. They're not going, oh, that horse is running faster than me. They're like this. They're focusing on their goals so completely that they're not even aware of the other things that are going on around them. That needs to be used. Don't get distracted. Um, number five, I hope this is okay. I'm talking really fast, but give me a thumbs up or something if you're happy, I'll be good. Thanks, Rachel and Natalie. Cool. Okay, number five. This is one of Sven Goebel's favourite lines is don't educate, inspire. And I love that. But sometimes, and I think it happens about three or four months in your business, Start trying to educate everybody because you know a little bit more about the product. You know a little bit more about how it works. You know the impact it's having you. And you're like, you become like a, a pseudo scientist. Don't really know very much, but you'll, God damn, you'll tell this person everything you know about Juice Plus until they're literally like backing away from you in the pub. So this is not about educating people. You know, it's not your responsibility to go out there and educate the world. Your responsibility is to go out there and share this product, inspire people to come and take a look. And you do that by taking the product loving the business, being really positive, being really outgoing, being really passionate, being after having huge integrity, being really honest, look, you know, one, caring about that person and not yourself, wanting it for them because you know that they'll benefit, not because you'll make commission out of it, wanting them to join the business for them because you know it will impact their lives, not because you'll benefit out of it. I want people to take this product for them, not for me. You know, this, it doesn't make any difference to me I, I, whether they take it or not. I want them to do it for them. 
And the same with the business. I want all of you to get, to jump into this business for you, not for me. I'm going to do it anyway. But you, I want it for you guys. So I'll, you have to inspire other people. You're not educating them. You don't know everything there is to know about Juice Plus. I, and you know what? You're better off not knowing. You need to know a little bit. You need to know your story. You need to know how it's made. You need to know a little bit. But everything that they need to know, if they want to know chapter and verse about everything about it's all on the internet there's a lot of websites people can go and look at they can look at your website your job is to inspire people to just come and take a look at it just take a look at it by being the best version of the product and the business that you can be so i love that and at number six <clears throat> i need a drink hold on right number six take the time to sit down number one with you so sit down yourself it doesn't take very long sit down and work out why you're doing it now i know everyone talks about their why you know why should make you cry and all that kind of stuff right and i was the biggest skeptic of all on the whole needing to understand your why i haven't got time to all that i've got too busy working and parenting and all of this stuff i'm just going to get on with it and then but just take 10 minutes and think why did i join up and just write it down you so that so that you have it always and it will change over time but something made you sign up something was the thing that made you think i love the product i'm going to take the product something was the thing that made you join the business something that you, where you, you were inspired to make a big change or a small change in your life mine honestly was to, when i saw what was possible i thought maybe i could leave my job or maybe i could go part-time i was like i could take my kids to school myself at nine o'clock not drop them off at eight o'clock and pick them up at six i can take them to school maybe just maybe if i work hard enough and then maybe i'll be able to pick them up as well at three and they could do a six hour day instead of a nine hour day now every oh time that i was like oh you know oh. Hold on a minute, you what that is. every time like you know something came on to distract me that's what i remembered and that's what i focused on and every time i got drawn into a facebook argument about something i was like is this is this going to help me pick my kids up from school no it's not it's a total waste of their time and mine so you need to understand what your why is your reason your because it has to be something that kicks your ass out of bed every morning. It has to be something that makes you do all the things that you need to do to, to get you where you want to be and sit down with your family and share it with them. It doesn't matter if they don't get it, but ask them what they're, even if you're little kids, some of you I know have done this, even the little tiny ones, you know, the two-year-olds, what do they want? It doesn't matter what it is, trip to the zoo, go to Disneyland, I don't know. But if they understand that mummy or daddy working hard or mummy and daddy doing a Zoom call or mummy and daddy, you know, having to be on the phone a little bit or is going to help them achieve and get the things that you all want as a family. It will help you all together to move in the same direction. And it goes right back to surrounding yourself with people who are, who are on the same journey as you. And that needs to be the people close to you too, so that, that you can all kind of say, oh, do you know what? You know, I'm finding it difficult right now. And you're like, come on, mummy, you said you were going to do this. You need to, you need to like, sort of sit down and work those things out. And the one thing I'd say to yourself is if you need motivating, it's my, my do you know what? It's the one question sometimes I get asked sometimes that I literally drive me nuts, which is how do you keep yourself motivated? If you can't keep yourself motivated in this business, you don't understand what this business is about, you don't get it, or your why for doing it isn't strong enough. Because yeah. I've never not been motivated. I've had days where I want to stay in bed, but I've never not been motivated to do it. And if, if that's what if you have that at times, you need to go back and look at why you're doing it because. Once you can see what's on the other side of it's too hard, I'm too tired, it's too difficult, the total freedom that you get from a residual income, the total freedom that you get from living your life part time on your own terms, when you get that, it's never too difficult, it's never not motivated, you never can't be bothered, you just do it. You just do it. So if you're not motivated, you need to go back to why you got involved in the first place. Um, you know, motivated people are hungry people, that's what I go out and look for. When I'm looking for a new frontline, I'm looking for hungry people, I'm looking for people who are hungry for something, want something, motivated, ambitious people who want to make a change in their lives. Um, and it's, and it's, it's just so important that you go out and do that. Uh, number seven, uh, let me just think now. Okay, go out and find three people. So this is like a basic thing, whether you're just starting out or you're six months in or 12 months in, make a commitment today that you're going to go out and find three people, three customers and or three team members who really want it who are really prepared to work for it and you're just not going to stop until you find those three people if you're already if you've already got a relatively good team of people go and find three people in your team who are working 
you know, what John always says, it's so easier to, what was it? It's easier to give birth than it is to raise the dead. And that's true. If you've got people in your team who you want it more than they do and you're contacting them all the time, you need your team to be contacting you. People should be coming to you. You've got, you've got like their future in your hands and, they, and, and you can help them. If they're not coming to you for help, and they're not come, I don't mean coming to you saying like, tell me what to do constantly. I mean, people go, I've done that. What do I do now? How do I get to SD? What do I need to do? They're the people that you need to be helping and reaching out to. And so you can teach them to teach other people. But go out and find three people that you can really work with. I don't think, honestly, you can work very, very closely with more than three or four people uh, to the extent that you need to. But when you've got those three people who are building and they've got, then you go out and find three more. And that's how it builds. But if you go out and try and find 10 and try and work with 10, you might need to find 10 to get three really good ones. But go out and look for hungry people who want your help, who want what you're offering. Don't beg people to join your business. Don't, you know, you, I'm like, are you, are you are you coming or are you staying there? Because I'm going. You coming with me? Yeah, good, great. Come on. If you're not coming, that's fine. I'll catch you later on Friday, the weekend or whatever. But right now, this is about building my business. Um, and I think uh, one of the things that's really important is to understand that you don't, that doesn't pay off straight away. And I think it's important to be really honest with yourself and with the people that you bring into the business about it does take a little bit of time to get moving. So like I said, forget about the people that you see on Facebook who are doing it a million miles an hour because that's just some people. Right? I'm more interested in the people who've been around for 12, 10, 15, 20 years. What are they doing? How did they get there? They're the people I want to be like. You know, I'm, I was one of those people who went really quickly in the business. You know, I went from dealer to PMD in seven months. I went to 39 club in six months. Oh, and I had a crazy business story. But since then, I've learned so much more about what you need to do and how you need to do it to be a better upline. And that's much more important. So don't look at other people, just look at yourself. And I saw a, an analogy that I'd written ages ago that I thought might help some people. And that if sometimes it feels like you're investing more in your business than you're getting back. And I know it feels like that sometimes. Uh, but like I said, number one, you've got to be honest about what are you actually doing? Are you scrolling through Facebook? Are you actually actively doing stuff? Um, but if you're actively doing stuff and you feel like you're not getting back what you should be, think of it like a bank account. So this is the bank account of your future. It's the bank account of freedom. If you want to look at it, your bank account of you, right? So I'm not talking about the money side of it here. I'm talking about what, everything that you get back for what you put in. So it feels like it's a bank account that you're putting money in every day. Every day I'm going, I'm doing a little bit here. I'm putting a little bit of money in my bank account there. I'm putting a little bit in here. And at the end of the week, you look at it and there's no money left. Nothing there. Where's all the stuff that I put in? Where's the output of everything that I put in? So it's like a bank account that you pay into. There's some, you know, when you look at it, there doesn't seem to be anything in that bank. But this isn't like a normal bank account, this is different. This is here where the balance of your bank account is the, all the investments and all the input that you put in are the things like your time, your energy, your effort, some finances to go into events, that sort of thing. You put that money in over three to five years, it's an investment bank account. So you're putting that money in and you're putting that money in and you're putting that effort in and you're putting that energy in. But when the three to five years comes and you go and look for that bank account, see what's there, it's 10 times the investment that you put in in the first place. But if you keep rocking up every couple of days expecting that bank account to be huge, it's not going to be because this bank account grows. This bank account of you is all of the things that you are, all your personal development, all your energy, all your efforts, everybody that you speak to, all of those things, all goes into the bank account. And when you come back to look at it in three to five years, it's 10 times the effort that you put in. But if you stop putting the effort in or you give up or you're not consistent or you're not focused, it's not going to grow. No bank account will grow if you don't put the money into it, the investment into it. So if you want to look at it that way, I know it can be frustrating sometimes to feel like you're constantly, it's you, I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm not getting anything back. If you consistently do that, over time you will start to get something back that makes it worthwhile. But you have to keep going and you have to realise it's not a get rich quick scheme, it isn't. It's to stay rich for a long time scheme, totally different, totally different. And if someone said to me now, do you know what I meant? 10 years from now, you'll never have to work again. If someone said that to me when I joined, it'll take you 10 years, you'll have to work full time around you, you know, your full time job and part time and all this stuff, it'll take you 10 years. But after that, you'll never have to lift a finger, you'll never have to work again, you'll be able to travel the world. Are you interested? I would have bitten the hand off and I still would. And that's what you've got to, that's what you're offering people. It doesn't even take 10 years, it probably takes three to five realistically if you're consistent if you faff around the edges and don't put the energy in it might take you a bit longer than that but that's fine too some people it takes longer than that but if you get total freedom at the end of it that's fine too 
So that was just a little analogy. I just thought that, you know, think about investing in your own bank account. Uh, where I'm up to. Right, I really, really want to show you this. I'm conscious of time, so hopefully you're all about right staying on. Everything okay? Are we all good? Yes? yes. Right, some of you will have seen this, some of you won't. Um, it's the 8, 2, 5, and 1. Now, I'm going to draw it out for you because knowing it and seeing it are two quite different things. And I kind of do it all out before if I can find my book now. Um, and I, every time I write it out, I'm like, oh God, actually, if you just do this consistently, you can build a pretty big successful organisation in three to four months. But you have to do it consistently. And I'll show you how it works. I'm going to stand up here. And if I write on here, and let me see if you can see it. It's the spotlight a minute. Right, can't see that at all. Can you a minute? Can you see that? Not really. Yes? Ish. Let me see. Um, I don't know how wide you can't. The spotlight's on, probably. Let's see if put a bit nearer. A bit better? Yeah, I've got a thumbs up. I'm taking that as a yes. Perfect. Right. Uh, I'm just going to check on the chat. So you... Yes, it's clear enough. Perfect. Okie okay, dokie. Okay. Well, I, what I'll do is I've, I've written it all down, so I'll take a photograph and put it in the group later. Who's that? You know it. You mute everyone again. Right. Whoever's not muted can mute yourself. I don't know why that's not working. Hi. Oh. Whoever's right. just onto the phone, can you mute yourself because we can all hear you? Thank you. I'm just doing some work. Oh, not really, because you're not listening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you meet yourself, please? Uh, how's golf today? Oh, oh Ooh, too busy. Sorry, I'm trying to find out who that is. Sorry, won't mute. Stephanie Bird. Got you. I want she mute. I think she muted. Okay, sorry guys. We all know Stephanie. Oh. I wonder if she's still on. Someone knows Stephanie, can they ask her to mute herself? Done, I think. Sorry, Stephanie. Right, I'll just have to carry on for some reason I can't mute her. Right, 85 and 1. Very simple, very effective. Now, this is a company incentive. Oh, cut my head off. This is a company incentive. Um, for a company. And when I joined, it was 625 and 1. And I was like, well, I've, so basically, this, the, the, the number 825 is volume. Handy. Um, so each of your products is worth a particular volume. Get your upline to explain it to you if you don't already know. But the idea is. The idea is that you. Right. Okay, go on. Right. The idea is that you um, you do this the A two five and bring in one distributor every month. So you're building your customer base and building your distributor base at the same time. Um, if you do both of those things, you'll grow your business. Bring in customers, bring in distributors. So I was like, well, if I can do A two five and one, why don't I do A two five and five? I bring in more than one. But, so what I'm going to show you is a kind of a halfway in between. So you do, this is you, okay, so you're A. And what you do is you bring in your 825, and this is you, it won't let me mute people, I don't know why. Right, let's see if that's any good, sorry guys. Um, it's really frustrating when people do that, so if you're on, can you make sure that you're muted? Um, so you're A. Okay, so your person A, what you're doing is you bring in, in your first month, so if, listen, if it doesn't matter if it's not your first month, you can do this this month, but just at the start of April. So you bring in 825 volume, so that's around about three or four customers, depending, let's say three and a half premium customers, right? So you bring in your 825, and you bring in three people. And if you've just started, you can definitely get three customers and three team members who are interested. If you're excited enough, it's really important that you're excited about what you're doing. If you're approaching people and going, yeah, I've got kind of a business opportunity for you. Yeah, I know, I don't really know what I'm doing. You've got to be like, oh my God, I found this thing. It's amazing. You're going to love it. You'd be amazing at it. Do you want to come to an event? That's, that's the kind of stuff you need to be doing. Really excited. So you get your, there's you, and you bring B, C, and D in, okay? Now B, C, and D are all doing 825 as well. Okay, so if you think you can't get three customers, I'm going to cover some other stuff maybe if I've got time. I might do the same call again next week with a bit more other stuff on it. You can get three customers, four customers. Your partner, your best mate, their best mate, your gym instructor, I don't know, whatever. Everybody can get three or four customers. 
if you just go out and it's about the networking as well as marketing you've got to go and wave in your circle of friends so there's you you've done your 825 and then those three people that you've got in have all done their 825 as well okay so that gives you 3300 volume in your first month is that bad that way there we go all right but well, actually handley is STD, you know, I'm not really focusing on positions at the minute, but that would, so that's you, and all you do is keep doing that every month, but now, once you're, in your first month you bring in three, after that I'm going to be realistic and say you only need to bring in one distributor a month and you carry on doing your 825, and let's assume B, C and D who you brought in only do that, they only bring in one person each, okay, so that gives you month two, that's month one, month two, so you've got A, that's you, B, C and D, and then all of you bring in one distributor each, which gives you E, F, G, and H. Making sense? Yes? We're making sense. Good. Okay? So everybody's doing, again, 825. Three customers a month. There's something like... Let me see, I think I made a note of it of how many people there are in the world. Wait a minute. Because I knew someone was going to go, oh, I don't know enough people. Something like 64 million, I think, just in the UK. Uh, yeah, 64.1 million people in the UK. Don't tell me you can't get three of them. <laughs> you definitely can. This product, everybody needs it. In the world, there are 7.4 billion. So there's loads of people in the world that need this product. So you're already getting three each, right? That gives you you four who started up here and you've all brought in one person each in month two. That gives you 6,600 volume, which happily is SD. Okay, you're not actually doing very much. You're bringing in one person and teaching three other people to bring in one person each and getting three customers each. You don't need to go out and get however many customers that is all together. You just need to go and get three, okay? Now that's month two. Look what happens in month three. Okay, one, three, you've got, what did we have? A, two, H, right? So you've got A, that's you, and your first three, yeah? E, F, G, and H, and they're three. Now, those people who you all brought in a month two, or one or two, everybody brings in one distributor, yeah? Gives you I, G, K, L, N, N, O, P. Yeah? Everybody's doing. Eighty-five. Your volume. Now this isn't peer length. It's volume is thirteen thousand two hundred. All you're doing is bringing one team member in and doing three or four customers. You don't need a hundred customers a month like some people get. It's great if you can, but you don't need that. Don't beat yourself up about it. But do do this. And look what you've got in three months. You've got a volume of 13,200. Now, obviously, I don't know what the pay line is. Depends on what your product mix and stuff is. But that's a three-month strategy. If you decide today that for the next three months, that's what you're going to do. Wherever you are in the business, it's going to be better than where you are now. Wherever you are, if I do it every day for the next three months, my business is going to be better than where it is now. Because that's distributors. Never mind all those people you've now got as customers as well. Three times that, whatever it is. That's how many customers you've got in your business too. So focus on what you can do. Instead of looking at someone who's got 50, 60, 70 customers and think I'll never do that, you focus on getting three people to get three customers each. Okay, now, just out of interest, I wanted to look at four months, which I thought was mega, so here we go, right? But, but this is a three-month plan, but let's just see what happens in month four, out of curiosity. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's going. Right, month four. Terrible writing. Right, we went up to, I think it was, I don't know, I can't remember, let's just see. Anyway, it takes you to, from A, B, C, D, it takes you the whole way through the alphabet. R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, and then we've got A1 through A6. Right, so just to, to recap, this was you. In month one, you brought in three of your friends to join the business with you. And they all, all anybody's done since then, you included, is bring in one person a month and three customers, yeah? Making sense? Yes, okay, so everybody's doing 
eight in five. So this isn't about bringing in customer, bringing in distributors who only buy their own product. This is bringing in distributors who build a customer base of three customers a month. Gives you a volume of 26,400. So that's a, a point going through your business of 26,400. Obviously, all of this going on, you'd be getting promoted, you'd be getting bonuses along the way, you'd be building a team, you're building structure, you're setting your structure up for when you get to NMD pay line, you've got the structure there. So many people get caught out by having the pay line because you get one good leg and rely on it. You've got to build width so that when you get to NMD pay line, you've got the structure like that and you're not getting scuppered by having one leg that's really strong. It's such a massive, it's like trying to put stand a table on one leg. You can't do it, it's not going to stay up. What if that leg falls off? What have you got left? Nothing. It's really, really important that when you get one good leg, you go, brilliant, that leg's done, and you move on and you build other ones. You've got to build width in your business. But I just thought, I looked at it and I thought, right, what does that mean? That gives you 32 team members. And let's, let's just say, right, I can't be bothered to do the maths, but let's just say those 32 team members have got 10 customers each, including themselves, right? So their own product order and nine customers each. If they're premium orders, that's your pay line, something like £20,000, just QNMD pay line in four months. That's to totally doable. It's totally doable. It's not complicated. You just have to JFDI, do the things that you need to do. Post on Facebook when you can't be bothered. Go to the events when you're tired. Speak to the person that you never followed up with. I don't know, but go out there and find people who need this product. Everybody needs it. They just don't know it. Everybody needs this business. They just don't know it. And you can do that because people are doing that. I did that. Anybody can find one key team member. You have to, but you're not going to find them unless you go out and look for them. It's a network marketing business. People focus on the marketing, they sell the product, sell the products it's all over Facebook, annoying the life out of people. This, it's not that. You've got to do the marketing, but you have to do the networking first. Otherwise, you're just talking to the same 300 people over and over and over and over and over again. So if you're not widening your network, which I'm going to cover in a minute, you, you You've just literally, it's like having a, having a 10 friends round, the same 10 friends every day. You've got to have different 10 friends every day. You've got to change it up a little bit and, and widen people that you're talking to. Does that make sense? Does it help? Yeah? At this point here, you'd be earning about 20% of that pay line. So what did I say it was? About 20 grand. So to about four grand, probably between two and four grand a month, if you do that. You telling me that that wouldn't help you out? <laughs> I don't know anyone who that wouldn't help out. It's so simple, but we all, me included, we overcomplicate it. We, we worry so much about what everybody else is doing instead of thinking, I can do this. I can do 18, 5, and 1, and I can, hell, I can teach somebody else to do it. That's so easy to teach somebody. Bring somebody in and teach them how to do that. So task yourself. If that floats your boat and it floated mine, when I wrote that, I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> I'm going to start doing that again. It's such a no-brainer. So if that helps you, go out there and make yourself a commitment. For three months, what are we now? April, April, May, June right you get to the middle of july potentially if you do that and i'm not telling i'm not saying it's going to be easy but it's easier potentially than floundering around in the wilderness and wondering what you're doing okay hopefully that helps i think that's quite exciting write it out for yourself work like do literally write it down go right me plus three and everybody plus one so that you can see it i've got it in the front of my journal now i'm like, just gonna look at it every morning and go it's not complicated it doesn't take up very much time to do that it doesn't take up a lot of time at all Right, sorry, I'm a bit passionate about that one. I think it's great. Any, any Tom, Dick and Harry can do that. This is going to collapse. Right, okay, so I'm going to rattle through the last ones, conscious of time, but hopefully they're all still on, so hopefully it's useful. Um, so yeah, I said that helps you build customers and team. It's really, really, what sets us apart from so many other companies is the, is the fact that we've got a growing customer base all the time. Our customer base is always bigger than our distributorship. And that, is, that gives you stability and longevity. And that's what sets us apart from so many other companies that are in the same industry as we are. You know, we're very customer focused and this helps you make sure that you don't end up being too much one way or the other. Um, okay, so number, that was number eight. Number nine, um, I've kind of covered this a little bit anyway, which is be honest with yourself. Like, are you really working? So this is, this is something you can like, use to help yourself be honest. Are you doing this? Are you bringing in three customers in one person a month? Some are, some aren't, some are doing a bit more, some are doing a bit less. But be honest with yourself about whether you're doing that or not. Um, and number 10 is, is kind of a, a wrap up in a way. There's so much other stuff, but it's 10 o'clock at night and I'm, yeah, I want to let you go and digest some of this stuff. 
but no one can do this for you. I would love, love to be able to do it for you, but I'll tell you the total honest truth, I'm still doing it for myself. You know, I'm just a distributor, just the same as you guys. I'm just, I'm, I'm just exactly the same. My number one priority every day is to build, I've got to set myself a target, bring a new team member and a new customer every single day. Do I hit it every day? No. Do I aim for it every day? Yeah. Qualifying my business is my most important thing I do every month. Do my 825 myself, do my 1250 PB, make sure my you know, you've got to, you've got to, you look at, you know, what do they talk about it on, um, on aeroplanes? You know, when the, you know, the, there's the exits and there's the lights and all that stuff. A mask drops down if there's a, an issue with breathing, right? So look at, the, look at your business this way. You have got to put your own mask on first. So what, how, but when you start getting a big team, you put your own mask on first and then you help other people. That's what it says about children on aeroplane. Put your own mask on first before helping children because if, what happens if you don't? What happens if you don't look after you? If you're not eating breakfast, if you're not building your own team, if you're not focusing on your own business as well, you can't help other people unless you've got your own SH1T sorted out. Right, you're important too, but you've got to build your own business. You've got to say to yourself, My business is my priority, it's my responsibility. If it's going to happen, I've got to do it. Here's some things you can do okay, be positive. We've already covered post on your Facebook every single day. Right, I'm going to rattle through these, these are like actual things. Post on your Facebook every day. So, you need to be doing this. Is you must know this already morning, noon, and night minimum. Now, I promise you, if this helps you, I look at it. Right, I pick people in my team and I go and look at their Facebook and I promise you the number of people who go, I'm not getting anywhere and I look at their Facebook and I'm like, you haven't posted anything since last Thursday. Like, what are you doing? If you don't share what, you, what you're doing with people, how are they going to know? Your Facebook is like the window to your house, right? It's like people coming up like this and looking in your window and what? What is Charlene doing? I don't know. Rachel Gray. Can't really see in her window. It's all muddy with negativity. Hmm. I'm not picking YouTube just because you happen to be sat in front of me. Don't know where. I'm sure it's not. But my point is, right, that's what people are doing. And if someone's like, this is another one. Someone's liking your post. That's like them knocking on your door and you're going, can't be asked answering it. Too busy. If someone likes a post, they're saying, I want more information. But I like what you're talking about. I'm interested in what you're doing. Follow it up. Always follow it up. Thanks very much for liking my post. Is it something you'd like a bit more information about? Don't be scared of doing that. They might say, no, I just like to go, okay, that's fine. But at least you know that you followed that up. If someone likes or if they comment, you've got to, there's a little reply thing. I'll tell you who's great at this, Vicky Marchant, right? John Holowati's girlfriend. She, if you comment on her, she replies individually to every comment that she gets on anything. Oh, it's thanks, Bob, so thanks for that, or a little heart, anything. But something very personal. I know if I comment on something of hers, she'll reply. I try and do it as much as I can too. So hopefully you'll notice that if you comment on my stuff. But if someone likes it, it's, just remember that, they're knocking on your door, your responsibility is to go and answer that door. Hi, thanks for knocking on my door, is there anything I can help you with? Don't ignore a like or a comment. Um, so your, whatever your social media of choice is, it's your shop window, right? That's what people are looking at. It's, you're not a shop, please don't be a shop, but it is your shop window, right? That's, there's people now, three years into my business, who are like, can you tell me a bit more about this juice thing? Like, where have you been for three years? Do you know where they've been? Watching everything. They've never went away. They didn't like anything. Never commented on anything. They're just watching through the window like that, waiting for you to screw up. It's not working. It's never going to work. Still working. Never going to work. She's going to stop doing it. She'll be doing something else soon. Still working. Shit, should have got involved three years ago. Sorry, Kelly. I still realise your little boy's still there. That's what they're doing. So you have to be consistent. And you have to think... If I don't post that day, what happens if that one person who could change your business, that one person who could come in and light it up, the next John Hollowbody, the next Emma Karen, the next Olivia Measures, if that one post that you didn't bother to do, that one event that you didn't go to, that person was going to comment on it, they were going to see it, and you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't do it. You've got to just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep thinking, this is the one, this is the one someone's going to see, because one day it will be. And if you can get one customer or one distributor, you can get thousands because you can do it. You know you can do it because you've just done it. It's like saying I can't climb Mount Everest when you've just climbed it and come back down. Can't do it, well you can do it because you've just done it. So just know that you can do it. Um, I've said a little bit about this, focus on the networking. So widen your network, we talk about it all the time. So one of the things I've started doing now, and I'm gonna, start, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set my alarm a little bit earlier because my kids come in at seven and then the day starts and I'm like, oh. It's like 9.30 and I'm not even having to go to work. I'm, I'm, I'm behind myself already. I'm going to start adding 10 people 
and messaging 10 people every single day. So John started doing that and I'm going to start doing the same because the beauty of it is there's warm market and cold market um, in your business. Your warm market is your friends, your family, the people that you know, the people that you work with. They're the people that you just share it with naturally, organically. Take this product, love it, you love it too, that kind of thing. Your cold market is widening your network so you're not talking to the same people over and over and over. And you've got to go and find those people. So find what are you interested in? I don't know, crochet, knitting, tennis, fitness, basketball, dogs, cats, children, anything. Facebook is full. Instagram. I went on Instagram and just searched like Zara, where do I shop? Zara, Topshop, Next. They've all got like 1.2 million followers on Instagram who are all shopping in the shop that you shop in. Just add them all. Go on Instagram and Twitter, you can add as many people as you like. Facebook's the same one next on Facebook. It's got like, I know, 3.4 million Facebook followers. If you shop in that shop, you've already got something in common with 3.4 million people on that face. You just start having conversations with those people. It doesn't matter. You don't know them anyway. So if they're like, oh, bog off with your, with your interests or I don't want to be your friend, who cares? You don't know them anyway. Don't harass people. Don't add people to groups or anything like that. That's really annoying. But just widen your social network of friends, widen your circle of friends, add people who have got a similar interest to you. And if they question it, you just say, oh, I noticed we were both part of the same group or both like shopping at Next and I'm trying to widen my circle of friends. That's all. Not doing anything to be, to be ashamed of. You're just trying to widen your circle of friends. It's fine. So that's why all those people are out there. You've just got to go and find them. Um, take the products in front of people. I think this is something when I was working in an office, I used to do it all the time. I literally took my blender and my shakes and everything, like four hours to the office and have my, have my shake at work. People are like, what the hell are you doing? I'll be like, on my desk. I'm like, I'm just making my breakfast. And like, so it, it really, people were coming over and like, what are you doing? And it was such a conversation starter. And people were like, can I try it? And yeah, of course you can. Take it. Like, so whenever I go to Costa or anywhere like that, I always have my capsules on my table. I'm not, I take them ideally. Just have them there. Somebody you don't know who's going to walk past, who's desperate to try the product. I'm like, oh, do you do that juice plus thing? Yeah, yeah, take it. It's amazing, whatever. But if you don't put yourself out there, I've got a key ring. It's just like a, you know, like the lanyard that you get at events and stuff. The juice plus lanyard. I just have my keys on one of them. You put your keys down to pay for your shopping in Tesco, and, and people ask you questions. So take your products in front of people. Just be make it visible to people that you take the product and, and or are in the business. Uh, hotels are another one. When you go down to breakfast in a hotel, take your product, take your capsules with you and take them to breakfast. Don't take them in your room and then go down to breakfast. No one's going to see that. You've got to put yourself out there a little bit in easy ways. Um, asking questions. So even though I've just literally talked for an hour, what I'm going to say, <laughs> I want you to talk a bit less and listen a bit more. This is a bit different because none of you guys can talk at me. But... I want you to listen, use that was we used to say it at school, you've got two of these and one of these, use them in that order. It's the same, you know, there's no point in asking questions of people if you're not listening to the answer. People, I promise you, probably in about three questions, people will tell you 90% of what you need to know to be able to share the product or the business with them in the way that will motivate them. Just because you want to lose weight doesn't mean Barbara wants to lose weight. Barbara might need a bit more of energy. Barbara might have a son who's running a triathlon who needs the, the shake product, who you can put in touch with, some, like an athlete, or I don't know, but just start asking questions of people. Ask questions that people love when we're interested in them. So many of us go to the hairdressers and talk about us, talk about them. Where are they going on holiday? What are their kids doing? How are their lives? You know, do, when somebody, I tell you who was fabulous at this is John Holowotty. You talk to John Holloway, honestly, I've been in the car with him for like four hours and before I realised that like, I haven't talked about him at all, we've just talked about me. I'm like, yeah, yeah, me, me, it's all about me. Actually, people love when you're, in, when you're genuinely interested in them. How is their day going? What's going on with them? Do it with practice. Here's a bit. If you're not comfortable doing it, right, and you find it difficult to make conversations with people because we're all different, go to an old folks home, right? No, they, they're lonely, they love conversation. Practice on talking to people who you know, people don't spend a lot of time with and, or, you know, or practice your business pres presentation on people you'd never want in your business. Because it doesn't matter if you get it wrong. It doesn't matter if you screw it up because you don't want them in your business anyway. So just go and practice it on people that, you know, that, that, the more you do anything, you're never going to be a professional golfer if you never hit a golf ball. Look at golfers and darts. They're the two golfers and dart players. The darts players in between games are practicing got darts. Golfers in between rounds or on the driving range, they're not putting their feet up and having a brew. They're practicing because they know the person who practices the most wins. So just go and practice and practice and practice and start your story and tell it to more and more people. Um, be a problem solver. 
rather than a salesperson. It's just a little bit of a kind of a, a kind of a thing that helped me. Um, right, I'm going to wrap it up now and think. Okay, actually, two things. Last two things. One is just to go back to this one. Right, people say, "Where am I going to find people from?" So I've said I have ten people a day. Message ten people a day. Right, where do they come from? Um. I've said a little bit about where they come from, from like events, uh, sorry, from groups and pages and things like that, but here's the impact it'll have, right? Potentially, this, I'll, I'll draw this out for you. Yeah, I will. Right, 10 a day. This is why it's important this script art's going to collapse. If it does, don't laugh. Well, you can laugh actually, it's got here. Right, let me just do this. I feel like a dentist. I'm sitting down. There we go. Right, okay, so 10 a day. This is the impact it has. Let's say you speak to 10 people a day. Can you see that? Yeah? No. I'll stand up in a minute. If you can't see it, it doesn't matter, I'll just talk it through. You see that? Yeah, hold on a minute. What's this? Okay. Go. Right. I'll do it down here. Got that? See it? Debbie, I'm looking at you. Put that. Right, 10 a day. Three hundred people a month, right? You're messaging, adding, talking to 300 people a month. Yeah, can you see that? Ish. That was. There we go. I feel like bullseye. Right. How many of that a year? 15,600 people a year. That's 10 a day. 10 a day is not that many, but it does not add up over time. So let's just say only 10% of those, so you go and do the numbers, only 10% of those people even reply or are interested, right? They're interested. 10% say yes. 1,560 people interested in the product or the business. Let's say that's, excuse me, of those 10%, 156 get moving, build a little bit of a business or build a massive business with each other. If you can do that, you and a friend both do that, right? 10 a day for a year. Get 156 people. So you're not if you're not going to get 156 people if you don't speak to those ones first. So 156 doesn't sound that many, but it's that's a lot of people. That's 312 customers between the two of you. Let's say 10% of those customers become team members. The end of the year, you've got 31 people in your team. It's worth it. But if you don't start by putting yourself out there and talking to people, I don't mean messaging people and, and you know, annoying people and, and I'm talking about building relationships with people, but the, the 10 a day, add 10 message 10, add 10 message, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Saw your Facebook, looks really interesting, might have something for you. Even if only one of those 10 a day replies, that's going to add up to that over the course of a year. So what I'm trying to give you is just stuff to help you to see. So the purpose of this call really was just to help you to see that you can do it and it is possible. And I, and, and I know it can be, it can feel overwhelming sometimes and it can feel like other people are going faster than you and it can feel like you can't do it, but you can. You totally can because it is possible. And the way I have always looked at this is if one person could do it, then I can do it. Because why would they be any better or any worse than I am? Because this business is designed for totally normal people like you and me. That's what it's designed for. It's geared up for us to succeed. It's not like a normal job. It's not geared up for failure. It's geared up for success. Everything's in place for you to succeed. Everything's in place for you to have the life of your dreams. You've just got to go and do some of this simple stuff. Step out of your comfort zone a little bit. Go and talk to more people. Force yourself to do it because I promise you, the why and the what and all the stuff that we talked about before is not going to happen if you don't get moving. Because it's so worth it. Like, listen, you'll have tough days, definitely. We all do, right? I'm, I'm human, I'm busy, all of that stuff, right? We've all got it going on. But if you don't get stuck in the mire of a bad day or a bad hour, try and have a bad five minutes and then move on. Get Whatever it is, get over it. You have to get over it because if you get stuck in the in the difficult stuff, it's never going to go away. You've just got to step over it like you'd step over a dog poo, right? You wouldn't stand in it and go, I'm standing in dog poo, I'm standing in dog poo. You'd get out of it. It's the same, <laughs> right? Stop standing in dog poo. Just wipe it off your foot and move on. It's literally as simple as that because if you don't, then you're just going to get stuck. 
And there's no need to be, because I've taught you there two or three or four things that can really just anybody can do. Because this is the one I'm going to sort of leave you with, right? When the, when the difficult days come sometimes, right, just remember why you're doing it. Because if you can, they'll, just remember there'll come a time, right? There will come a time, and it, it's not very far away, a couple of years, maybe a little bit more, where you'll be sitting on a beach, right? You'll be on a sun lounger, you'll be having a cocktail or a cup of green tea or whatever it is that you drink, right? You, your family, friends, watching the sunset, being so glad that all you did was give a little bit of effort for three to five years so that you could live the rest of your life in total freedom. And if you can do that by doing some few very simple, uncomplicated things, don't be the person who looks back in five years' time and thinks, I could have been on the beach if I'd just done it. Could have had everything if I'd just done flipping eight, two, five, and one. Not complicated. <laughs> Okay, hopefully you found that useful. It's your chance, guys. It's your opportunity to go and do it. I hope that's helped. That stuff I've taught you, you can teach anybody. You can teach that to anybody. It's not complicated. Um, love some feedback in the group, on my Facebook, whatever, anything that you find useful. Always helpful for me as well, guys. If you can um, t let me know what was the most useful bit. Uh, what do you want to hear more of? What kind of calls would you like in the future? I come up with this call every week and sometimes I'm like, oh, like, who do we want to hear from? Who do we want to speak? So just I'll, I'll start a thread on Facebook on the, about future calls and what kind of things you'd like me to cover or other people to cover. But um, yeah, anything you've found particularly useful in there, let me know. Hopefully this is recorded for those people who haven't been able to watch it. But I um, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. I'm conscious it's 20 past 10, but you're also on the call and you've not got your hands tied behind your backs. <laughs> so uh, thanks. I'm going to unmute you so you can say bye. So don't like talk to myself. Hold on. Thanks, Emma. That was amazing. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. Thanks, Emma. Great feedback, guys. Thank you. Thanks very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Sleep well. Thanks, Emma. You're yeah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Mum, your, your daughter's speaking now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. She'd be asleep. <laughs> You're still up. I'll be in trouble. <laughs> Thank you so much. Really, really appreciated it. Who was that? Let me just see. Steve Bishop. Oh, you've gone. Wait, wait. Oh, Bishop, got you. I just. <sighs> oh, you sneaked <laughs> I've lost the chat now. Never mind. Oh, there Come on, then. Right. Ooh, I'm just reading these comments. There's some good stuff in there. Oh my god, that's clever. That was too bad and one of them. Oh, so we've done it with the best. Thanks, Nicola. Oh, I want to keep that feedback. That's good. Can, can this be shot and put on Facebook at the Academy? Uh, whatever it is, yes, I'm sure it can. <laughs> Yay! What's the percentages of commissions in each stage? That's, if you're still on Vicky, that's on uh, Elite Academy. Um, Cool. Right. Turn it off now. Oops, it is. Please not chat in at the end. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, I'm going to love you and leave you guys. Okay. Sleep well. Thank you. Oh, very good. Very good.